What you're looking at behind me is by far the cleanest and most cable managed setup that I've ever had in my entire life and probably more so than I'll ever have again because of how much time, effort, struggle, and complication it takes on top of the fact that this will probably be destroyed within like a month or so when I have to start swapping components out for review and all the cable management comes crumbling down. A lot of you all have mentioned in the comments of videos about my spaghetti monsters that I have in the floor down there and how I need to clean it up and why don't I just cable manage and why don't I just get the cables off the floor or just tie them up or whatever and typically my answer has been that it is a waste of time and I having done all of this I stick to that answer in that this was a complete waste of time in terms of cable management even if it feels rewarding kind of in the moment it's still something that will make my life more difficult when I have to start swapping everything out and something that will come crumbling down again. But I have been revising my Megadesk 3.0 into what I'm calling Megadesk 3.5, which is a tradition that I have carried over since pretty much I was in middle school with regards to my desks and things like that. And I wanted to show the revision. I did a desk tour last year when we moved into the apartment when I hit 100k subs and I haven't done an updated tour since, and I actually had planned to do last May after we moved an updated video about me making my mega desk process and things like that, because I get asked a lot of questions about what desk do you use, who made it, how big is it, things like that, and I can't really answer those very concisely because I made it, which is also why I can't make desk recommendations either, because I don't use pre-made desks. But this video is going to be a tour of my desk in May 2019, not 2018, and as well as an explanation of how I make these desks in the first place and why I do the things that I do. So as mentioned, my mega desk project kind of started back in middle school with what I'm calling the super desk era, uh, because once we revamped my bedroom, and again, I was in middle school, so my parents were doing most of the work, we built me up a nice little desk using a piece of MDF and some file cabinets as legs. and. That was my nice little corner with my computer, and then later I expanded it with a bunch of shelves for all my retro game consoles, and I added a CRT TV later, and things like that. Come 2011, 2012, we pivoted the entire setup in my bedroom to another wall and expanded the desk by another four or five feet, and this is what I'm calling Mega Desk Revision 1, and it had me a lot more room. I ended up wall mounting my TV, yada yada. Three apartments later, this is the third apartment, I am on Megadesk 3.0 and now Megadesk 3.5. And this started by taking the desk that we built from the first apart or from the previous apartment and then expanding onto it with this big L that we have here. So the desks are made using two by sixes for the legs. So we have two vertical ones that go up however much high. Now my wife's side, this is actually two desks in one because my wife has a whole four or five foot wide section and then I have this whole L here and hers is a little shorter because she's shorter so if you want your desk to be where your arms sit you want that to be like your desk level so that you're not straining your arms up or down or what have you. So we have two by sixes for the legs, two tall pieces, one piece in the middle at the top and the bottom screwed into each other and then we have a big old piece of MDF cut for the different chunks of the desk. I have a six foot or so section for my main desk and then a big O, I think it's about eight foot section here for the L bit and that one is actually deeper. Traditionally the mega desks have always been two feet deep which is kind of shallow. It prevents me from using a whole lot in terms of deep monitors. I can't use CRT monitors as my main monitors as I've talked about in other videos that is actually something I would enjoy uh, because of the depth and big old IBM Model M keyboards I've experimented with and stuff. I do have limited depth overall but it ends up being a nice, you know, workspace to work with and with regards to having a keyboard and enough space to use my mouse and write and things like that. This section is a lot deeper. It is almost four feet deep, which gives me lots more room to mount up my computers, my monitors, things like that, and have, there's a window right here which my cats love to hang out in, and so that gives them room to hang out and watch the birds and the squirrels and hiss at other cats and things like that, which is nice to have when I'm sitting here working all day to have a little bit of company right there. So when we moved last year, it was an abrupt movement, but then we realized that we would have a lot more space to take into account. We took the extended desk that we had in our previous apartment with a big old wire shelf set up next to it and expanded it to this L. We each had two vertical shelves on our side, as well as the big old long vertical shelf up above for all of the display items. 
and this time I wanted to change it up because I've been trying to redo stuff a lot in general. Things are starting to feel cramped because I have so much wired in here. I had my gaming PC under the desk. I had some extra PCs over here. I had all of my audio equipment down there. And between the static during the winter, which I think is ex at least uh, it's a catalyst that I have it on the carpet, which, you know, sends more charge through the carpet, which builds up more static. I had a lot of static issues this past winter. And just generally, it makes it harder to cable manage. The cats mess with everything on the floor. It, you know, it's things like that. I wanted to start moving the audio equipment up on the desk and moving my computers around and things like that. So we built a super big shelf here out of plywood. It is a little bit more than an inch thick. Got some really heavy duty brackets to hold it up. I did cut me a couple support beams to put under it. However, they were just a hair too short, so they don't actually work unless I screw the shelf into it. And then they would block off my computer space at the moment anyway, but the brackets seem to be holding it up there. So I moved my entire audio rack up there. So I have a little Griffin 19 inch audio rack with my mixer, uh, my two DBX 286S channel strips, my ch uh, power conditioner, power strip thing. And then up above it, I have a little shelf, which isn't used at the moment. And my network switch for this half, because I have my, on my wife's side, we have our Wi-Fi router and then my 10 gig switch, which runs all the way over to my server cabinet and things like that. And then to her PC and my main PC. But then I have game consoles and my TV and things like that all over here. So there's an extended copy over here. The game consoles were on a Lego table just kind of hanging out over here. So they finally got moved up to the desk, which means my controller or our controllers are always in wired, you know, length if I need to charge them or whatever for live streams. And I'm now using my Dell monitors for my game console live streaming, which means I get to play in native 4K and HDR when desired. So those are the revisions and this is the main desk itself. I have two different setups in one here. I've got my gaming setup, which you see right here, which I use for all of my PC gaming, my game experimenting, things like that. I have the BinQ Zowie XL 2730, 144 hertz, 1440p monitor. I run it at 120 hertz. On the left, 27 inch. I actually downgraded from the Viotech and the other BinQ monitor I have because the 32 inches were just taking up too much space. And then next to it, I have mounted the LG 27UD68P. 4K monitor that I use just for checking colors and things like that because the colors on these gaming monitors are horrendous and it's really hard for checking stuff like my webcam up above it. I need to be able to look at the monitor that's below the camera there to adjust colors and everything I try to adjust if the monitors aren't color accurate ends up looking like trash. Mounting, mounted above it, I have the Logitech Brio webcam that I don't really use at the moment but just so I can integrate into my setup or make videos on later as well as the Sub 2R camera which is a indie project, a smaller startup company that used to make like sub submarine cameras and things like that. I wanted to make a more kind of content creator, but also tinkerer focused camera. It's kind of pricey, uh, but I've been following the project since like 2016 and I'm excited to finally be, I've been testing it out for about a month or so. I will have videos on that soon. Got the Elga Elgato key light thrown up here for now. And then I have a tripod mounted over here for my main camera to go on at some point. I did a shot that was pointed over here at my main setup and you guys just loved it. And so I've been trying to figure out how I did that so I can recreate it ever since. So that's my gaming setup. I've got the HyperX PUBG uh, desk mat that I got from IEM Oakland 2017. I got the Go XLR, which handles all of my gaming PC audio. So I've got the Blue Ember microphone at the moment, which is a new microphone from Blue that I am in the process of reviewing. Basically my game streaming setup will be where I cycle out review microphones from now on, which will save me a lot of time and give me a little bit more real world use out of them. Uh, put up on the RA something or another mic arm. And then I've got a Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition Chroma V2 keyboard and a Logitech G502 gaming mouse and a little graffiti wrist pad. Then I have my two computers back there. I've shown them off in streams before, uh, but I haven't made a final video on what I did to my gaming PC. So stay tuned for that because it is the fastest computer that I have ever built. And I am super stoked for you guys to see that video, but I haven't finished it up yet. But I got my main PC and my gaming PC right next to each other in that little corner. The corner is a little dark at the moment. I want something to cast a little bit more light up into the corner to make it a little bit more interesting. However, I'm afraid of what I put back there getting kind of overheated and melted or something. And it's hard to fit anything back there as well with the computers back there, but still looking for kind of like a point like solution to shoot up into that corner. I pick up that all that all that setup. And then we transition over to my production PC setup, which is over here. Now this setup runs off of my i9 7980 XE computer. The gaming PC is a 9900K. 
I've got my two Dell UP2718Q production 4K HDR monitors. If you followed my monitor roulette series at all, you'd know that this was hell and a half to finally get set up with good monitors for color grading and video production and things like that. And I'm super stoked to finally not have to deal with that anymore. And I've been thoroughly enjoying these Dell monitors. They may be some of the best monitors that I ever use in my entire career, assuming I just don't start swimming in money and buy all the super high tier monitors, but they are super great. I have a review of them. It's already written, but I haven't shot it yet coming very soon. There's a lot over here. I have a bunch of desk mats everywhere. I have my game consoles, as I mentioned, it's just easier to run them over here. I've got my Lexar HR2 workflow hub. That is my multi-card reader. Uh, I mainly just have a bunch of UHS-2 SD slots in it and then a little 512 gig SSD that I back up all of my pictures library to. It's almost full, but for now I'm backing everything up to it. And then I actually have under the desk mounted a small little extra card reader for like micro SD cards or CF cards, things like that. Just has a little extra bonus. I've got my WASD Custom V2 keyboard, Logitech MX Master 2S mouse, another graffiti wrist pad, and then I've got two Elgato Stream Decks. One's at here, or right here, that has some of my video production macros and things like that. I've actually been having trouble with a lot of my macros lately. The screen positioning code just stopped working all of a sudden, but it's a glorified program launcher for me at the moment. And then over here I have another one, which is all of my scene switching for my game PC live streaming that's over here and things like that. So I have two for my different setups, but they're all connected to the same computer. We have my Heil PL2T mic arm with my uh, Electrovoids RE320 microphone. I've been going back and forth with, with which microphone I use for my at-desk recordings because the audio has been kind of finicky. I've had some complaints about how my RE20 sounds, but I absolutely can't stand how the shotgun mics sound there. They sound a little too tinny and it takes me way too much work to get them sounding decent enough in my opinion with all the reflections coming off the monitor and the walls and things like that. So I've just switched back to that and I'm going to try out the RE320 for a while. I've got my Panasonic G7 mounted up above it as a webcam running into the Blackmagic Decklink Mini Recorder 4K, completely uncompressed 444 RGB 4K footage, freaking fantastic. However, I was trying to be clever with my lens setup. I have the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 art lens on there with a speed booster and then an ND filter. That way I could keep the full shallow depth of field, completely blur out my living room here because it's always a mess. I mean, it's our living room, it's where we do laundry, it's things like that. I can't just keep it clean for every spontaneous video I make. So I was trying to keep it dark back here and blurred out. However, the footage hasn't been turning out super great lately, even though it was great before. So I'm either taking the ND filter off or switching lenses entirely soon, we shall see. I've got the custom Epos Vox RGB sign up there, built by the lovely Explorographer been up there for a while, and then that is the Lemetric Time. Pretty crappy, basically, Wi-Fi clock that also has a YouTube subscriber thing. It's like 200 bucks, it's cheap plastic, it's unreliable. Not worth it, but looks really cool to have a live sub, live sub count up there. And then I've got the PreSonus, I forgot what they are, but studio monitor speakers. I've upgraded from the Mackie ones because they died, as everyone said they would. They did, but they were cheap and what I could afford at the time, whereas these were like 200 bucks, a little bit more pricey. And then up there, uh, I mentioned the DBX-286S's. I have a Furman, uh, that's the power conditioner, and then my mixer is the Soundcraft Multitrack MT-12K, 12 MTK, whatever, the Multitrack 12 channel one that I review, or I didn't really do a formal review. It was kind of an unboxing and feature showcase. Been loving that mixer, super great. Yeah, that's my main setup here. I've got, a headphone or a headphone a microphone arm desk clamp here that I move around whenever I'm doing extra mic arm or mic reviews however I seem to have gotten rid of my extra mic arm so I don't know what I'm supposed to attach to it at the moment uh, underneath here I have mounted a Behringer headphone amp that's a four-way headphone splitter so I can do headphone comparison testings and so it's just easier to hook up and disconnect my headphones and always have you know at the hand volume control I've got little 3d printed headphone hangers on each of the desk legs to hang my different headphones and headsets and things like that. And then my uh, my UPS battery backups are all on wood planks now. So again, that there's you know less added potential for static in the carpet as a result. I've got some like file crates and stuff like that under here. And then this is that uh, flexible roll flex light that I reviewed forever ago. I'll have product link to the description below up here as my main key light. I think that's part of my color problems with my A-roll for my at-desk videos, why it's been looking so bad. And so I'm hopefully switching from that soon. I think Aperture and I are gonna work together for something pretty cool. But for now, it's doing the job. And yeah, 
This is my desk setup for May 2019. I realized this was a longer video, but I really wanted to document these kinds of projects as well as showcase the tour as I just like documenting stuff as I go and show people how I make my desks because there's not a whole lot of stuff out there like that. And I like doing these more unique kind of crafty videos. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Would you use a desk like this? And keep in mind, there is a whole extra section that I'm not really showing. That is my wife's stool monitor setup as well. But I currently have four monitors going at once. This is always subject to change. I'm changing this every month. I used to have a big CRT monitor back there, but it doesn't really fit with my computers there at the moment. So I haven't figured out what to do about that just yet. And I do plan on adding a little monitor to monitor all of my uh, PC temperatures and things like that. And might run it off a laptop or something. It's always changing, but this is what it looks like as of May 8th or 9th, 2019. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you did. Subscribe for more tech education. Check out my other content and reviews of pretty much everything listed here as well. Uh, apologies for the tank top. I know it's usually frowned upon in YouTube videos and things like that, but uh, I, <laughs> for Sundays, we've been spending Sundays at my parents' house and I started having to do some yard work for them. And I spent a total of what? Like two, maybe three hours outside and got ridiculously sunburnt on the back of my neck. I do everything I can not to sound like a redneck, and then I, every summer I end up being a literal redneck because I have such fair baby skin, it's sunburned instantly. So Mother's Day, I'm supposed to be doing a lot more yard work as a, you know, my gift to, to my mom. So I'm going to be drenched in sunscreen to try to keep that from happening again because sunburns are not a pleasant experience when you have ginger baby skin like I do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.